Hello again and welcome to another showcase video of sorts uh, where I am planning on showcasing my hobby room which is something that has been requested by a few people over the years um, so I figured yeah why not give it a little look and uh, see what I actually have uh, mainly people want to see how I actually store all my models and you know see the, the whole hobby setup where I paint and you know, also I guess work on, on the Warhammer Armies project books so that's what we're doing here. Uh, this room is fairly recently decorated since I moved here uh, about six months ago now. And it's taken quite a while to get everything in order. But uh, yeah, let's just get started, shall we? So in the corner here, we have my Sisters of Battle art pieces that I put up. I have to have them behind the wall uh, or the door. So when the door is uh, closed, I can look at them. Uh, otherwise they are a bit covered there, but uh, yeah. It's, it's good enough. Oh, and here we have a, a crossbow, you know, in case of zombies or intruders, I guess. Uh, and up there we have a flintlock rifle that I got from my grandfather. And here we have some Warhammer art, uh, Bretonian to be precise, by Karl Kopinski. Uh, I think Alex Boyd. Uh, a dagger that was supposedly Richard Lionheart's. Uh, my workout TV for when I'm actually using my cross trainer, which is not as often as I would like, but uh, you know, when in Rome, I guess. Um, here we have more art, which is Imperial. This is also Karl Kopinski, and uh, I think, yeah, I think it's old Karl Kopinski actually. Uh, also got a flintlock pistol there. And here are some orcs that I'm just about to prime, but I haven't been able to for several days because it's freezing cold up here in Sweden, even in March, in the northern part at least. And I guess we go through the cabinets here with the armies. I have some new stuff that I haven't showcased before, so we're just gonna have a quick look at that. Araby, up first. We got Estalia. We got my Amazon army. We got Albion. Here we have my Bretonian army, all the way up here. Here we have my Dogs of War army. Another eight shelves, only Dogs of War, lots and lots of mercs. Uh, Raging Heroes, Sisters of Battle for Fantasy, which I don't know when I'm gonna paint those, uh, we'll see. Kislev, uh, waiting for more war. Old world models to be released before I start painting those or get back to painting those. Empire, another four shells of Empire. My high elf army that I collected last year. I won't paint a few characters yet. Um, I'm hoping to, I'm not sure if I will paint it this year or maybe next year, we'll see. Dwarves, I'm planning on getting these done this year. I have added a lot more dwarves since I took the uh, main video uh, showcasing all my models and orcs and goblins i've started and uh, they're going to be after the battle also new so you haven't seen those before i got my norskan army my warriors of chaos army my dark elf army my Cathayan army Uh, got some space for more Cathayne models when the old world comes out. My Nippon army. And my Sister Battle army there, which I will do a showcase on soon. And here is my bookshelf. Which features lots of white dwarves. And some, I think, yeah, some Donald Duck books, stuff like that. Also a big Donald Duck fan when I was a kid. Uh, I got my Warhammer books and some historical books. Uh, mainly about the Crusades and... Hundred Years War and stuff like that. And uh, here I got my Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings and Game of Thrones or Song of Ice and Fire books. Along with the Marineburger Landship, which is too tall, doesn't fit in any of the cabinets on the shelves there. And I've got my Bane Blade, which is the only reminder of my, remi remainder rather, of my uh, Imperial Guard Army that I had. Uh, I think I sold them back in I don't know, 2010 ish or something like that. Uh, I got some Lord of the Rings figures from 2002, I think. These came out at the same time as the Two Towers when I was 12. 
so I bought several of them. These I got last year. I think I painted them in November or so because I, I just got a real kick for uh, Lord of the Rings nostalgia and I wanted to paint up a Fellowship of the Ring. And I used to have a bunch, uh, like a whole uh, Minas Tirith display piece um, in 28 millimeter scale with all the, the figures that I did when I was 14. Uh, but I didn't really have space for it anymore and I needed cash for Warhammer, so I ended up selling them, which I don't really regret. I'm, I'm glad I have these mods they have. Uh, this guy, this is Gollum or Smeagol, which is my wife's favorite character from the movies. So I painted this guy up for her as a gift when we uh, first met, actually. And um, up here are my X-Men uh, statues that I showcased in a previous video. Uh, this version of Rogue is new and a lot bigger than the other ones, 8, 1 8 scale. Uh, I just painted her a couple days ago. And I also have another version of Magic here that I also painted a couple days ago. Uh, I think this one is cooler than the previous one I had back there. So I decided to get that one. And final shelf here, we have some more statues. I have Talisora from Mass Effect and Kasumi Goto from Mass Effect, my favorite companions from those games. And I'm, I'm probably gonna get more. I'm gonna get an uh, Liara, I'm gonna get uh, Miranda, I'm gonna get Ashley, I'm gonna get another Tali and another Kasumi as well um, later on. I'm just waiting for the STLs to be released. I have a McFarlane Battle Sister, uh, the artist proof version, which I painted up. A lot of fun painting this scale. Uh, I got a 15th century French knight. Uh, this is actually just a resin statue that I bought on Crete or Cyprus 20 years ago. And it was essentially just spray painted silver and or dry brush silver. So I gave it a proper paint job, which was fun. Uh, same goes for this Templar knight, also repainted that one uh, about a week ago. And here we have Ezio Auditore from Assassin's Creed 2 uh, from the limited edition box. And behind them I have a Morningstar and a Bayonet, because why not? And on top there I have a Chinese longsword, a Jian, I believe it's called. And uh, next up here in the window I've got a Katana, a Japanese sword, which I guess most of you would already know. And I have another knight statue that my mother got for me on a trip uh, somewhere, don't remember where. I have Excalibur, the first sword in my collection. I got this when I was, I don't know, 11, 12 maybe? I wasn't very old, 13 at most. And I got a Viking axe, a bearded uh, axe, Danish, I believe. Dane axe, I think is the proper term. And I got Sting, Feral Sword on the Rings. And also there we have Aragorn's sword, Narsil. Actually, Aragorn's sword is technically Anduril, so this is uh, Elendil's sword, but you know, only for the biggest nerds, I guess. Uh, we have a shield here. This is a Templar shield, sort of, except it has the uh, Black Cross of the Teutonic Order, and the lions are actually from the English House of Plantagenet, which I am sure I just butchered the pronunciation of. I have no idea how it's supposed to be pronounced. So, yeah, this one is. Uh, doesn't make any sense if you're the shield, but it's really cool. And it was a good um, Christmas present that I got, again, probably something like 20-ish years ago. And uh, I got my hobby set up here. Uh, with my work computer while I'm working from home. And I got my uh, you know, computer screens there and my own keyboard. Uh, kind of dusty, but well, it works. Uh, I got two keyboards because one is from for the work computer. So I switched those out. And here's my hobby setup with the stuff that I'm currently painting, which is currently as I was loader. It's almost done. Just gonna tidy up some colors there and uh, give them a wash essentially. And got some work tools there. I have a regular printer, not a 3D printer. Sad noises. And uh, I got some extra paints stored here. Oh, there goes the trash can. Uh, with extra hobby tools, supplies, and a flashlight in case I drop bits on the floor, so I have to look for them, which happens more than I would like, but, uh, well. And uh, here we have my paints. 
the ones that are not on the desk here. Essentially, this is my, what do you call it, everyday work paints or paints that I'm using for a specific army project. These are the paints that I'm using more, um, I, I guess these are more niche paints that I'm not using quite as much. So I don't need them to be quite as close to on hand. And like I told you there, those paints are just backup paints for when I run out because Vallejo are apparently refreshing their paint range, which means the price is gonna go up. And I figure I'm gonna go and hamster as many of the paints um, that I like that I know I'm gonna use a lot of in the future. And uh, yeah, I guess here's my home gym. Uh, again, cross trainer and uh, you know exercise bench, which again, I'm not using as much as, as I should or would like to because I tend to get really into some when painting and so I get stuck painting instead of exercising. But you know, whenever I get around to exercising, I, I have the options. And uh, let's see, what else we got? Oh yeah, here we have our hobby supplies. I keep my basing material here and tufts and texture paste. I keep my bases here. Lots and lots of bases. Um, these are actually not all my bases I have. These are just the bases that I am more or less likely to use. I have a ton of round bases as well, which I probably should sell because I don't really use them. I have more bits and Renetra bases. Uh, I need to get organized with this stuff. This stuff is actually more or less organized, um, but this stuff is not. I have more bits and some extra models that I'm not really using for anything. And uh, yeah, more bits, I guess. Again, this is not really super organized. I gotta get cracking on that eventually. But you know, out of sight, out of mind, I guess. Uh, here I got some movement trays, my Xbox controller whenever I actually have to use it. I'm a mouse and keyboard guy, but sometimes, you know, you gotta use the controller. And I got some extra sprues here. These are War Games Atlantic Conquistador pieces. I already built the models, had a lot of bits over. And I had to snap those off the sprues at some point. But uh, yeah, it's a little piece, it's gonna take a long time. So we'll see when I, I'll get around to do that. Um, don't have too much left to show. I got some stuff in the wardrobe here. I have more Warhammer pieces. Um, this is just stuff that I'm gonna sell. And an extra shelf in here so I get some more well shelving space these are my bits boxes which are sort of organized but not as much as I would like uh, I got lots and lots of uh, Ziploc bags because you never need when you know you never know when you need those for you know shipping stuff which I, I do I tend to end up selling quite a lot of Warhammer because I uh, buy more than I need so well I mean don't be all and uh, the big bag there is actually just full of packaging material, so it's not Warhammer in it. Thank God for that. And lastly, we have my closet of well, clothes, but I also keep some more hobby stuff here. This is for, you know, priming. You can just lay it out and spray prime on it. I have another executioner's axe here, which I don't have space for, and I think I'm gonna maybe sell it or something. I don't really need it. I have my spray paint box, so essentially when I'm gonna go outside spray painting, I put the molds in this one, carry them out, and then put them on the ground or newspaper or spray in the hobby room or something like that. Uh, that is not my hobby room, but uh, um, it belongs to the, uh, what do you call it, housing association. Uh, I also got a bunch of, as you can see, uh, round bases in there, probably several thousands of them, I have no use for them whatsoever. So I'm probably gonna sell them or give them away or something. Um, anyway, I think I think we finally actually checked everything in my hobby room that is of any value. I mean, I guess we went through the whole thing actually. So uh, anyway, I'm starting to ramble here. Uh, so I'm, I'm gonna cut this one short now. I hope you enjoyed a quick tour and that you got something out of it. Uh, in case you're wondering how to display these models uh, like this yourself. These are Death Hoff cabinets from Ikea. I've added some extra, I'm not sure quite sure what you call these, sorry. Uh, you have to Google that. But it's very easy to put these in, put some extra glass shelves in, and you just put some light padding under the glass shelf there so it doesn't scratch. And you can get twice as many shelves as come with the uh, original uh, shelves by default. 
So very good story solution I have found. Um, but yeah, that's all for today. I uh, hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you again in the next video, hopefully next week or so. Anyway, cheers for now.